hello, this is Valerie with the Enchanted Dope, and today we're going to be doing a basic video on painting your own dragon eyes. Now your dragon eyes can be used for just about any creation here. This one hasn't been used for anything um, yet. Um, you can use it for bracelets, hair pieces. Um, this one has a chainmail bezel around it. It can be used as a keychain. You can put a hook here with um, the keychain on it. You can also wrap it in polymer clay, like this here. Oops, thunder. Alright, so the tools and materials needed will be listed down below um, in the uh, description. So you can go and check out what you need. Basically, all you're going to need is a few simple things. First is a cabochon. The one we'll be painting today is 40 millimeters by 30. So you got like 40 by 30. Um, this one is a 30 by 30. And so is that one. You can get these at different places. Like I said, the link will be in the description. Um, another thing you're going to need is nail polish. Today we're going to be doing like a fiery type eye. So um, I've got some reds, some golds, some oranges, some yellows. Um, I'll be showing you those as we go along. And then the last thing you're going to need is some tools here. Now I'm using this awl. It's part of my polymer clay tools. It's just got a sharp, pointy end. You can use a toothpick or... Um, Anything you find, you can use some, if you have some scrap wire that you can't use it for anything, you can use it. You're also going to need, just grab it here, something that is straight, like a chisel. So if you have a chisel, you can use it. Um, I have a selection of tools that I use. We have this one, as you can still see, it has some nail polish still on it. Um, you can also use a flat tip screwdriver uh, to do that as well. And you don't need to. You can use what you have on hand um, and provide if you want. If you have an old butter knife you don't use anything. There you go. Um, so let's move these out of the way and get started. Alright, so we have our carpet on here. And we're going to flip it over so we're working on the back, the flat end. So you've got your curved end here, and you've got your flat back here. So, and it does have some little imperfections in it. There was a chip. Um, I know, like, there's some that you can get at the Dollar Tree, the fish tank glass. You can use that too. Um, I do it for some things. Um, there's a lot of imperfections in it, but it also gives you um, some added texture to it. Up to you what you want to use. Um, sometimes we'll just practice on the fish tank glass and then come in and redo it on here. Now no eye is going to come out the same. It's really hard. Um, so if you're doing these for earrings you might want to practice um, ear design a few times just to get it the same or as similar as possible. So what we're doing is we're taking this, it's an LA Colors in metallic black to do on the center here. And I like using the metallic black because you don't, you can't see it on the camera really, but it adds some um, sparkly to it, I guess you could say. Um, so you can see like a little bit of glitter that's in there. So we're going to take our awl, we're actually going to bring this down and give it a feathered look. And you can skip this step, you don't have to do it, it's entirely up to you. So we're just scraping and pulling the paint, you zoom in here for you. You can get a better view of what we're doing here. There we go. Focus camera. And we're just pulling the paint from the center out. And then I'll put 
bit in the corner to straighten. There we go, just like that. And if you find you're running out of paint, and you're not be able to pull it out like you want, you can just add some more. It's not a problem. in there. And I always, even after I feather it, I add the paint in the middle. Not all the way to cover up the feathering, but so that you don't see all the cuts and marks within the center here. So let me just pull some of that out to make this side look a little more feathered. There's some cuts within the pupil there, so I'm going to take just our black and fill it in some, just so you can see the feathering, but not all the way in the middle there. All right, so we're done with the black for now. <clears throat> now we're going to take this LA Colors Color Last. In the color endless. And we don't want to gob it on. We don't want it really thick, but we also don't want it too light that you can't see it. I'm just going to take and feather it on. Now, some of these shades are like the first coat is kind of translucent just gives a hint of red to it so we can actually go over it again to darken it. That's what we'll be doing here. Now remember if you mess up or you get paint where you don't want to that's the good thing about using nail polish is acetone nail polish remover works great in getting that out. So if you're going along and you like don't like how it's looking, anything like that, you can always erase and start over. I mean you can do that too with like acrylic paint, but it's a lot easier with the nail polish. And I use the nail polish because for one it's cheaper than acrylic paint and I don't do a lot of stuff that involve acrylic paint <clears throat> so it's not like I always have it handy. I mean I could go out and buy some but right, that looks good. drag it through and just all the way around. Now with it still being wet you'll see how it's depositing it up in here. That's because it's still wet and that's fine. It doesn't have to do it all the way. Um, it's just adding little specks. And then you'll find that sometimes like the layers are already somewhat dry and so it's not going to leave that little speck. So as it kicks up on my tip here, I'll actually just slowly pull it through to try to redeposit some of that. 
but it's not even it's not critical if it doesn't sometimes I'll get spikes on one side and sometimes not on the other it really depends many times I'll have spikes and the bigger eyes you can do more layers so they kind of get lost so the specs are kind of good on um, like smaller eyes because they last and you don't do as much um, texturing. Now I prefer the bigger eyes because you can use a lot more color and you'll get a lot more depth in your eye. The more colors you can use the more texturing can be done and therefore um, get some really cool or not techniques um, effects with having the more colors all right so i'm liking how that came out i'm just gonna hit up a few places here see if i can get some more speckles in there there we go That's my eye right now. So what we're going to do next is move on to the next color. So I'm using another um, clean color nail lacquer in metallic red. It's a little bit darker. I like to go from the darker colors to the lighter colors. So around the edge would be darker. So if I wanted to do like black around the edge, I would have done black and then started with the red. But for this one, we're just doing, we're starting with the red. So this is a darker, it is metallic. So you'll get that shimmer. That is another reason why I like using the nail polish. You get a more metallic look. Um, I don't even know if metallic is a word. But you just do the same thing. You go over the where you did the red. I'm just kind of feathering it in there. No rhyme or reason. I find that when I'm painting my eyes, um, things just sort of happen. You don't have to draw it out. Well, this is how each color has to be, and things like that, because. Like I said, no two eyes will come out alike. There's always going to be some sort of difference in them. And they're going to come out looking, there's going to be a slight difference. I know, like, when I could sit here and do 50 eyes at a time and start with doing the pupils, and all my pupils look different. So that's just what happens here. Alright, so we've got that. You can just kind of see the two different shapes here. Alright, so this we've got here. I'm going to pull the color more with my chisel tool here. And this actually does a different effect. You still get the lines, but I just take, it's a little thicker, so I take my tip right here, put it on there, and just draw it down. Same thing, all the way to the end, like with the last color you did. Now with some eyes, as we get up here into more layers and colors, we'll let it dry more in between scraping. Um, if there's, when you put a nail polish down and it dries and you put another color on top of it, it gets the bottom um, wet again. So, 
if you do it when it's still wet, you're going to muddy up your colors, which is, and it can be fine. Depends on the effect you're going for. Um, I find that um, in some cases the muddy effect looks awesome. But if I'm going for like a certain look or thing like that, um, sometimes it doesn't come out how I want. So I try not to do that a bunch. And then so once you have that, you want to go through and look and make sure, like, like right here, they've got some big lines. And go through and just kind of, kind of just thin it out some. And you can use this, the awl too the whole time. You don't have to use like a chisel like tool. It's up to you. I would get some um, fish tank glass, paint it out, and just go through with the tools to see what effects you get. Um, everything's going to do something different. Like I said, the chisel does like a thicker line, whereas the awl does a thinner line. And I've got other tool sets that I could use. I just haven't played around too much with them. So we have that red, and we're going to start moving on. Um, I have an LA Colors. Uh, color crease here in the color luck penny so it's more like a copper it's a darker color here so now we've, I've got my reds so we're gonna start transitioning up into like the gold or the copper or orangey colors and then I'm just going to take and a little bit past where we have the reds be a couple millimeters in. We're going to put in this copper color. Now this is a thin one, so I'll probably do a couple coats of it. Just so you can see. And I know it's not picking it up on the camera. I do apologize. I'm going to get a better camera, I promise. Oh. I'm just going back over it, second coat, so it's not so transparent. And you'll find that with some polishes that you know, it takes a couple coats to get the color you want because, of course, it's really pigmented in the bottle and it's like a deep copper color. But when you apply it, it's really thin and it's more like glitter, which is cool. But when you're trying to get the color itself into the eye, you have to do a couple coats. <coughs> so, let's see if you can see that on camera. So, yeah, we gotta put my hand behind it. If you look here, you can see where there's the reds and then the copper just past it. Get a good angle for you. Yeah, that light doesn't help. But if I turn the light off, you won't see nothing. So, it's either you don't see effects or you don't see anything. Alright, so we're just going to let this dry just a minute. Um, it doesn't have to be completely dry. I just want it tacky. While we're waiting for that, let me put that color up. Alright, so. Should be good. I'm going to take my, oh, I prefer to use this over the chisel a lot. Especially when I'm working with a lot of colors, so that when I do my lines, you see <coughs> a lot of all the colors. So, I'm just going to pull through like so, and I'm not going all the way to the end, maybe a millimeter or two from the end, and I'm just going through.
and I don't really want it to redeposit <coughs> in there so I'm wiping off the tip once the paint starts building up so that it doesn't redeposit too horribly And you will see that you will find that it sticks to your fingers. I just keep my polish remover handy. And I clean it up after. Because it usually dries before on my fingers before I move to the next color. And if you don't want to, you know, have to wear that, you can wear gloves. Up to you. If I may get in my way. Then be careful if you get nail polish in the middle here. Like towards the end when you're scraping. It's going to scrape the black. So just be really careful when you get to that end. Alright, so we're going to just finish this layer here. Off our ends. And then I go through and where it's like kind of clumped, I'll go through and just run my all through it. It's not too clumped, my lines are thin like I want them. Okay, so that's what we're looking at so far. Now, if you get nail polish on this side, it comes off. No polish remover. Best thing. Or I'll scrape it. And you can see the shimmer, the sparkle in it. Oh, looking great. Alright, so we got the copper. Now we are going to use another clean color nail lacquer in metallic orange. Actually it's going to be metallic orange and then metallic mango. They're similar in color but the orange is just a tad bit darker. It's more coppery than the mango which that'll transition get into our oranges. Alright so and yeah, just the same thing. It's a lot of repetition. And you're just panning over where we've cut or scored, I guess you can call it. Making sure to get into those grooves. Because um, if you run it across, it may not get into the groove. Um, it could just run across the uh, top part and we don't want that. Never fails. Somebody's got to walk away. So please disregard the dogs. Alright, so there we go. Let me double check and make sure it's all in there. Again, I just wanted to dry just a bit. So this is what we're looking at now, which is looking pretty cool. So you can see like the reds and you can see a bit of the copper. <coughs> and that sparkle. I guess the help lights with that. Or the light helps with that. Yeah. I'm just going to let that dry just a bit. Let me zoom out just to see if that helps. Uh, I'll focus it. Yeah. Okay. Alright, so again, with our all, we're just going to pull through again, not all the way to the end. 
Um, maybe it's about there. So again, about four or five millimeters from the end, if that. Paper towel nearby because it's a little wet. So if you can see, I'm only coming to about there. I'm not going all the way through it. And be careful around the black because remember, as I said, um, putting wet polish over dry will make it wet again and you could scrape off the black. And it's not easy to do once you've gotten far in your painting. Alright. As you can see, because it's still wet, it is redepositing right next to it. So it's just there we go. If you find that happening, just um, try to finish because there's other places that are dry. As you can see here. Um, and you can come back to it. Also, I'll come back to there once I get this thing because I know that it'll be dry. I'm just sticking my fingers. Alright, so we're going to come back over here where like it globbed up. Just make that those lines. A little smaller. There. Alright. Good. Alright, so now for the mango. Metallic mango. And the clean color and actually the metallics. I found as a set on Amazon. Um, <clears throat> all shades of metallic. And I love those. They're great transition shades. Um, from like a darker to a light so with doing that it's not like a hard like if I went from like a dark red to an orange um, you could see that I mean it, it's still it's okay I mean, it's just an added effect but it gives you that soft transition um, between the colors Right, so just going around, make sure we get it all to the edge because, I mean like around here, you're really not going to pick it up, but you'll see in just a minute why I try to get it to the edge. Make sure you get it into those grooves that you uh, scored out. <laughs> See, like I painted it and it's not in those grooves. I always like pull my colors out beforehand and arrange them from yeah. dark to light in the way that I want to go. This way, I'm not trying to hunt down a certain color in the middle. I'm going to let that dry a minute. Got a lot. Let's see, we're up to you. one, two, three, four, five colors now. I think we have five more to go. Maybe. We'll see. I'm kind of iffy on a neon top. Especially on this side. I don't have much neon. Look, I got some metallics. So I might leave the neon pop out. Um, so while we're waiting for this dry, um, I will mention that down below in the description is <coughs> a link to um, Back to Earth Creations. Um, I actually learned to do this through Yvonne Williams. So I will link her, the video she did, to um, in the description. So you can go and check it out too. Just because you watch it for me doesn't mean I'm an expert on it. Just same with her. Um, she's done it for... A long time I've done it for a while now but it you're getting a different perspective on the same thing basically so um, 
something that might work for me it might work for you it may not work for her or you could see us do the same thing but in different ways and be like oh okay well I could do it this way or this way there's no one set way to do it um, you have um, different insights on doing it so we're going to go ahead and mm, all right we're gonna start over here this seems to be drier please disregard the thunder loving nature is trying to make an appearance into my video all right so again just coming back and scraping again leaving a few millimeters from the edge now you can actually go all the way to the edge um, entirely up to you um, I will on some of them I'll get like all the layers painted and well, I'll actually do it on this one um, when I get to the end I'll show you what I mean by that Now, we're just making the Dragon Eye today. Um, we are doing a basics series so that um, videos down the road, if I show you how to do a bracelet or the polymer clay with the Dragon Eye, um, you can come to the basics video in order to see how to do the Dragon Eye. And it's less time in the video. I know some people don't want to watch the video on each individual step. And if it's a basic, uh, something you can do for more than one thing, like the Dragon Eyes. Like I said at the beginning, there's a lot of things you can make with them. Um, so with watching the basics, you'll be able to, you know, get that done and then go on to, like, I guess they're intermediate, you could say. I wouldn't even call it that. I mean, it's just taking your basics and putting them together for something else. So... Now, as you can see, where I didn't do it around the edge, I might have slipped some places, but that would have been bad to play. So this is what we have so far. Looks a little, oops, good. Again, I've got some bigger lines that I want to break up, so I'll just come back in and cut through it sure I clean off my tool so I'm not redepositing all the paint and, and if you look at it it's like why are you painting the whole thing if you're just gonna scrape most of it off well trust me I've done a dragon eye where I've done like 12 layers and then um, scraped like all of it off I went and did, scrape, did that scraped through it all and then did one later. So you could still see all the colors, but that is weird. So next is we're going to get into the oranges. So we've got pure ice, and this is in the color Drive Me Crazy. No, same thing. We're just going to, this is a little thinner, put that on here. And we're not going to cover up the middle just yet. I just start towards the outer part and then co come back, making sure I get in all those screws. don't want to see the grooves from the scores from the previous color because we want it to cover it up as best as we can. 
So you can see here, we've got all basically started from the outside of the black. Ooh. Good going, Valerie. So if you should ever do like I do, and you can, well, you can't pick it up on camera. But there's a, a line there. You can fix it. Not a problem. So again, just let that dry a second. I'm just letting this dry some. Now, um, I'm not going to do the pop. I don't think... I'm thinking of using the neon pop. It's a uh, traffic cone orange. I don't think it's going to need it. No. Alright, so we're not going to use that. Our next one is actually a Halloween one that I picked up the other day. Haven't used it yet. But it's um, Gord. Just like gorgeous, but Gord. Halloween. And it's this, um, I guess, pumpkin y looking orange. And it's got, like, I go, it's not a color shift, it's got glitter in it. But um, it's subtle. Which is good. And then from there, we'll shift into our yellow. And it's a metallic yellow. And then I got Sinful Colors Cash Game, which is another glittery type yellow. So these are the next three colors. So we got the, the orange, metallic yellow. And then we'll finish up with the yellow. I don't think we'll use the neon top. No, not this thing, but that's fine. Alright, so we are going to start scraping again. Let me see. This time, we're going to pull it all the way to the end. Starting from the black and just pulling it all the way. You will it will clump at the end. I will tell you that now. Because all this color was sitting there. So when you go to scratch it, you're gonna it's gonna be like clumped at the end, which is fine. Um, we'll just make sure you are wiping your brush. And you can even let it dry some more. Entirely up to you. And if you want to wait to get more um, it will kind of muddy it. That's kind of the effect I'm doing here. Just to show you guys. And I know it looks like a mess right now. I promise it will look awesome when we're done. Alright. So sometimes I wasn't planning on doing this to begin with. But I wanted to show you, like, if, if you decide at the end, you're like, you're coloring it and you see all these awesome effects and everything like that, and then you're like, you know what, I want more yellow throughout the thing. You would do this. And then you do this so you would see more of the yellow in it. Um, if you want to see yes less yellow then when you scrape you know how you you would leave a few millimeters you would just leave less so I would only scrape that much and it builds it up and so like I said there's no one particular way to do this you could 
help me do like I'm doing or, you know, be like, no, I don't want to do it like that. Um, do it a different way. Entirely up to you, again. Um, play around with it. That's all I can suggest. If you want to see the different effects of Hampton, Uh, if you want to see the different effects that are possible, like I said, go get you um, some fish tank glass. You can get um, a bag full of it from like Dollar Tree for a dollar um, and play around. Just you know, paint eyes on them or just start putting paint down and cutting through it, seeing what happens if you use certain tools it's the only way you're gonna learn is to play with it so we've got that it is sticky but we've got it and this is what it kind of looks like right now all right so I'm gonna go in with my gourd this orange Get it in the grooves really good. And then this one, I'm going to let it dry just a little bit longer than the last time because I'm not going to um, cut all the way to the end um, like I did with the, uh, the, whatever, the last orange that I did. Um, I don't want my yellow going all the way through, but I do want a pop of that yellow to give it, uh, especially since it's, it shimmers. It's got glitter in it. Um, I do have a gold. Oh, I got too much. All right, not a problem. Let's just yeah, if you put it on and it glows, just wipe your brush out and then just bring it through. Now, I'm actually putting some of this on the black. I don't plan on scraping it, so I'm going to do a light coat so I can still see it. But I'm trying to, I got too much orange in one spot. I'm trying to even it out. So it's not a big mess. So, again, we will let that dry. And while we're doing that, I'm going to clean my fingers off because, I, like I said, they are tacky and a mess. And even though I usually wait till afterwards, it's just sticking me to me too bad. So, clean those off real quick. Now, the reason I didn't, um, speed through it and basically just do a non-talking tutorial um, is because this was like this. There's so many different ways and things that could happen. Like just a minute ago, I gobbed on too much of that orange and I couldn't keep it. Um, things are going to happen. There's going to be some tutorials where it's time lapse and it's like, you know, you watch it, I zoom through it, that's it. Um, that might be something that if I do decide to do um, a creation that has a dragon eye already in it and I tape the drawing of the dry or the drawing the coloring of the eye I may just um, put that in the video and time lapse it even though it, you will be linked back to this video but that's what I I want to try to do it with you guys so it's like step by step you walk through it but you never know so Alright, I didn't get all the paint off because um, I'm just going to get more on it. I just wanted it enough where my hands weren't sticky. Alright, so again, we're not going to pull this all the way through to, where are we? No, I'm not going to pull it all the way through. 
gonna do it to about there. Leaving about a couple millimeters. And it's the paint's still really wet. Which is fine. Again, you can do this more than once, especially if it's like clumps like that. Oh, I'll come back to you. And sometimes I will switch tools in the middle because I feel like I need to thin this out some. Alright, so my tools have decided we're going all the way to the edge of this. So, as you can see, I went too far, so now I'm going through and taking it to the edge. Again, it's fine. You didn't mess it up. You didn't um, you don't have to start all over. You just gotta make sure you do the same thing all the way around. And if you don't, that's fine. You don't have to. I could probably get away with just doing part on this side, but the symmetrical side of me says just do it. And I keep getting that pupil, or, uh, yeah, pupil. So my black is kind of streaking through. Alright, now I'm going to switch again. And make Now I am going to finish it off with red on the back. I want to spill a little bit more red in here. Because, uh, I can't believe it. Get the two yellows in, and then I'll show you what we're going to do. Again, we just get it in there in the grooves. Now this one I will not be taking to the edge. Just or at least try not to. I said that the last time and we all saw what happened. So get this in here. Oh that's drying. I do have a um Pearl ice. It's I guess gold glitter. It's called Studat that I'll put in sometimes. It's basically a clear nail polish with gold little gold glitter suspended in it. A lot better than the chunky glitter. But it's great. Say if you don't have any of the metallics like I do. You can take and put that as a layer down so you do have that sparkle in it. Um, if you have pearlex pigments, which I do, you can make your own. Um, I found that I like had two of the same colors because 
when I go to the store, I'm like, ooh, nail polish. I'm like, oh, I need more blues, or I need more yellows. I'll buy one, I'm like, I already have it. Well, I'll take your acrylic and it, mix it in there, and create your own color. Or your own metallically looking shade, anything like that. So the, your colors are unlimited. All right, let me get my, I got another all. Back to here, so we're gonna just I am not coming far off, maybe a few millimeters, as you can see, and I'm taking my tool and I am just going back and forth. I'm not lifting it really. I'm just going back and forth. I'm scraping. I'm gonna clean my tool off here. Get off my finger. It's like a glob, so take that off. And then we'll just do the same thing again. Now, if I flip it over, I'm not sure if you can see that, but like, with the cutting, there's this big piece right there. And then it's over here. I don't want like the big thick lines because. <clears throat> I personally don't like them. It's not saying you can't have them, you might like them. But. Something that sounds to see squiggles because we did squiggles basically. Alright, so our last color is Cash Game. We're not going to be cutting or anything like that. This is actually, well, almost our last layer. So we're going to put this on nice and thick over the whole back. It is kind of translucent, so which is fine because that is how we're going to bring more red back into our eye. I'm going to thinly cover that up. I mean, it doesn't have to be thin. If you don't want red or more red brought into the eye, you can just coat it really thick with this. And be done with it. Or you can um, use another color. Say you really like this fire eye, but you want to see a neon pop. We didn't put in our neon pop. You could take a neon color and back it, make sure it's thick. So your translucent part of the um, nail polish will actually work. It will show through. Now let's pull up my red again. Normally you would let that dry, but I didn't put that thick of a layer and if it mixes, it mixes. Now 
And you want to put this on nice and thick and so you don't have the translucent pieces. Sometimes you can, the translucent will, if you put it on um, a flat bag, like uh, the polymer clay. Um, if you have a solid color backing, it's not going to be too noticeable, but um, I like to make it so that you can't see through it because you can't really see through a real eye. I don't think you can see through dragon eyes either. So we're going to do that. Alright, so. Alright, so this is our eye. Try not to touch it because it's wet. Let me cover up the. Now you've got your oranges, your gold, your yellows, a little bit of the red, and you'll see the red start to shine through. Now you can see here, <laughs> my people smeared because I scraped through it. That's fine. I mean, it didn't ruin the whole look or anything like that. So, that's good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to let this dry. Normally I would put it in the window with the sun. I have no sun. Um, it's stormy. As I'm sure you've heard throughout this video. Um, so I'll let that dry and then um, it'll be good to go. Usually I let it dry overnight, a good 24, 48 hours. That way, if you like lay it down on something, it's not going to stick to it. Even if it appears dry and it has not had time to cure yet. So that's why I said 24 to 48 hours. And it'll be good to go. So I want to thank you for taking the time to watch our video. Uh, make sure if you want to see more of our tutorials as well as a metaphysical corner, you can um, subscribe and click the little bell for notifications. We also have um, a Facebook, Patreon page. You'll see those links down in the description as well. Um, so I'm going to go put this up and let it dry and I will see you next time. Bye.